There are various classifications of plain room, class 100, class 1000, etc. To give you an idea, ambient air outside in a typical urban environment will contain about 35 million particles per cubic meter, the particle size being 0.5 microns and higher. But environment class of 100 should not contain more than 100 particles, and the particle diameter being 0.5 microns per cubic foot. In a typical clean room, air entering outside filtered to exclude dust. Air inside is constantly recirculated through HEPA filters, high efficiency particulate air filter, or through ALPA filters, which is ultra low penetration air filters, to remove internally generated contaminants. Walls, ceilings, and floors should also be sealed and dust free. There are various other controls besides engineering control, such as clothing of personnel, special clean room furniture, specialized mops and buckets for cleaning. In addition to particulate control, the clean room is temperature and humidity controlled. The temperature should be maintained around 70 degrees Fahrenheit, and the humidity should, relative humidity is about 45 percent. Also, electrostatic charge should be minimized by keeping the lab humidity around 45 percent. If a full-blown clean room is expensive for you, you can use a clean hood to prepare your samples using the following criteria. Common contaminating sources in a regular lab are ceiling tiles, paints, cements, and dry walls. Dry walls can give high calcium and lead contamination. Rust on shelves, equipment, and furniture can give you iron contamination. Carbon, iron, silica can come from your temperature control systems. This is a prep lab we use for preparing samples for ultra-low level ICPMS analysis. It's not only essential to produce a quality sample using high pure materials, well cleaned labish, select proper storage containers. It's essential to package and store low level standards in a clean room as well. We manufacture the solution in clean room and package them in two different sets of conditions, one in regular lab, another in clean lab. This chart shows a comparison of solution packaged that way. You can see here iron, sodium, and zinc impurities are at higher level That's, that is kept or stored in a regular lab versus that's packaged and stored in a clean lab. Impurities also can increase with time. We found a considerable increase in concentration of impurity of elements such as aluminum, calcium, iron, magnesium, sodium, and silica, and zinc. There are several probable reasons for this. Dust from the lab environment can contribute calcium, sodium, potassium, magnesium, and silica. Titanium and zinc can come from LDPE bottles. Aluminum and iron from materials of various fixtures used in the laboratory. So how do we control contamination? We must minimize exposure. The apparatus that will contact samples, blanks, or standards should be opened in clean room, clean bench, or glove box. When not in use, it should be kept covered well in a plastic bag or a box. We must clean our work surfaces more frequently. Before processing samples, all work surfaces in the hood, clean bench, and glove box should be cleaned with a wipe, lint-free wipe, soaked with reagent water.
We must select powder-free gloves and use clean gloves when handling equipment, samples, blanks and standards. The sweat contains potassium, lead, calcium, magnesium, as well as sulfate, phosphate and ammonium ions in addition to sodium and chloride. Use metal-free containers. Volumetric flasks, beakers made out of Teflon, polycarbonate and polypropylene should be used. If clean room is not available, all sample preparation should be performed in a class 100 clean bench or a glove box with flow of air, preferably nitrogen. Use adhesive mats at entry points to control dust and dirt from shoes. Change shoes and or wear shoe coverings to reduce or from bringing dust from outside. Keep lab humidity around 45% to minimize electrostatic charge. Surface charge can be eliminated by use of commercial static eliminators or by wetting your lint-free cloth with high-purity ethanol or high-purity water and letting it to evaporate in the lab. Lab should be cleaned as soon as it is used. Common dishwash detergents cannot be used. Use that are specially designed for lab glassware. Separate labware into low level and high level. Low level labware is used only for solutions that have metals at below 1 ppm concentration. Same way, high level labware for solutions with above 1 ppm concentrations of metals. Reason? Labware tends to exhibit memory effects from previous solutions. Segregate labware for specific metals. Metals such as lead and chromium are highly absorbed by glass, but not by plastics. For boron and silicon analysis, avoid borosilicate glass. Use plastic te Teflon or quartz labware. Samples containing low levels of mercury, especially in parts per billion levels have to be stored in glass, polypropylene, or fluoropolymer because mercury vapors diffuse through polyethylene bottles. Avoid lint producing paper products. Use membrane filters instead of ashless filter paper. Ashless filter paper contains 20 trace elements greater than 1 ppm level. Use no chrome mix instead of chromic acid to clean labware. You should not use jewelry, cosmetics, or lotions. Cosmetics and lotions can introduce contaminants like aluminum, calcium, copper, chromium, potassium, etc. into the samples. Some hair dyes contain lead acetate. Calamine lotion used for skin irritation also contains zinc oxide. Selenium is an active ingredient in some anti-dandruff shampoos. Wash lab coats regularly. If you come to the lab straight after your morning swim, you may increase copper contamination in your samples you're working with. As you said, used in swimming pool contain copper. Select gloves that have no powder. Powder in the gloves contains high concentration of zinc. Use ultra clean sample introduction system. How do you determine if you have a clean lab? By running blanks. Think blank. Blanks have to be cleaned to avoid false positive or false negative results. Anything that touches the sample must be absolutely clean. Besides controlling contamination, there are various other things you can use to do a successful analysis in your lab. Test personnel, equipment, and methods with QC samples. Observe clean lab procedures and techniques. Use reference materials that have not expired. Make up and use only freshly prepared calibration standards. Rerun samples using a different dilution factor to check your original analysis. 
Site appropriate QC samples with expected levels of analytes or use standard additions. Carry blanks through all steps of an analytical procedure. 